<clears throat> Last week, the Senate passed an agreement that preserved America's full face in credit and began to rein in Democrats' runaway spending. But the Senate's work is far from over. Today, with the threat of economic crisis behind us, it's time for the Senate to focus its full attention on some of the most basic responsibilities we're sent here to fulfill, keeping America safe, keeping America fed, and keeping the lights on. First, we have a little less than four months left in the fiscal year. Our colleagues, Appropriations Chair Murray and Vice Chair Collins, have expressed a shared goal to fund the federal government through regular order. That means 12 full-year funding bills processed, passed, conferenced, and signed into law before the end of September. I think all 100 of us agree that we should not be funding the American people's government through one big omnibus at the end of the year. But achieving that is going to require hard work and incredible cooperation. To produce funding bills that can pass the House and become law, we'll have to build on the progress we made last week. After two years of taxing, spending, and runaway inflation, the American people chose to elect a divided government. In the coming weeks, that divided government has an opportunity to restore stability to the appropriations process and deliver more of the fiscal sanity they expect. But only if the Democratic majority lets the process actually work. This year, we also have the responsibility to deliver a farm bill a full 10% of the American workforce depends on agriculture. Commonwealth of Kentucky is home to nearly 75,000 farms. And in the past five years, since the last farm bill was passed, farming hadn't gotten any easier, neither has ranching or forestry. Small businesses and farm families across the country will be watching the Agriculture Committee's work especially closely. Chair Stabenow and Ranking Member Bozeman and our colleagues are already hard at work producing legislation that delivers the certainty and support they need to continue innovating, supporting rural jobs, and feeding America. Good evening, friends. Millions of Americans are now spending more on groceries, but they are ending up with much less products. Many states are now approving new rebate checks to help their residents. Payments worth as much as $1,000 are set to be deposited in just four days. The Biden administration has also just announced a $115 million investment in infrastructure. My dear friends, please do me a big favor and watch until the end of this video for all of the details. Also, in three days, I will be announcing several more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on my friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. The past few months, of robust grocery store sales would suggest that shoppers are not stretched for cash. But that is not the full story. Food manufacturers like Kellogg, Nestle, and PepsiCo all reported sales growth in the first quarter of this year. But even though sales are up, Americans are buying less. Growth has been fueled by higher prices, which offset declining volumes. This year through May 21st, compared to the same period in 2022, 
prices of eggs increased 48%, milk prices rose 5%, and bread rose 12.7%, and prices for bread rose 12.7%. Experts noted that early in the crisis, when people stopped eating at restaurants and stocked up on pantry staples, unit sales had soared. But since then, they have been coming down. And in 2021, Americans used stimulus payments to cover costs. Those who were working from home did not have to spend money commuting. By volume, grocery sales are still generally up compared to 2019. But that increase is not so much a sign of extra cash. It is a sign that people are trading down from restaurants to preparing food at home. Some Americans are trading down by going for cheaper items or even shopping at bargain stores. Tighter restrictions on the SNAP program that are part of the debt ceiling deal means that hundreds of thousands of Americans are at great risk of losing access to benefits. The changes follow the end of crisis hunger relief programs in March of this year. Several U.S. states are still distributing refund and inflation relief payments. Eligible residents in Colorado have four days to get their applications received, approved, and processed in order to receive installments of a rebate next month. The property tax, rent, and heat rebate offers a payment of up to $1,044 every year to eligible residents of Colorado to help pay for utilities and other property-related expenses. But in order to be eligible for this rebate, you must have lived in Colorado for the entirety of 2022, had an income of less than $16,925 for single filers, and $22,858 for joint filers, along with being either older than 64 years old, disabled, or a surviving spouse that is at least 58 years old. The deadline to receive the rebate in three installments beginning in July. The first installment will begin in July, with subsequent installments being paid in later months. The first direct deposit is scheduled for July 5th. For those who have their application approved and processed by June 10th, while the first paper check date is July 15th. President Biden announced today that more than $100 million in funding has been distributed for repairs to Jackson, Mississippi's water system. This is the first tranche of more than half a billion dollars appropriated by Congress. President Biden said in a statement, For years, the people of Jackson, Mississippi, have suffered the consequences of aging water infrastructure. Biden wrote that the initial $115 million investment in Jackson's water infrastructure would come from funding provided by the 2022's sweeping omnibus spending bill. The bill includes a total of $600 million for the city's water system. The president said that his administration has made a lot of progress, but there is much more work to do to ensure that all Americans have access to clean water. Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Michael Regan who works with the EPA, told CNN News, We are announcing our first round of $115 million. It will go to plugging some of the leaks in the distribution system, shoring up that integrity, ensuring that the pressure continues to stay at a certain rate. In August 2022, Jackson, Mississippi's water system was already suffering from largely systemic issues like old, leaky pipes, and malfunctions at treatment plans. But then the city's main water treatment plan began failing after torrential rains, leaving roughly 150,000 residents without clean drinking water. President Biden will host his first cabinet meeting since January on Tuesday, where he's expected to talk about his investing in America agenda, which is likely to be a cornerstone of his campaign for re-election. Well, my dearest and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Tuesday. My dear friends, 
Thank you very, very much for joining me here and for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, I will be announcing several winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on my friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.